Well, hey everyone, how's it going? So a couple days ago, I posted a video review of this 150 watt DC to AC inverter made by PowerJack. And for the most part, it's actually a very, very good inverter. And I've been curious as to what makes this thing tick. So in this video, I'm actually going to disassemble this thing. I'm gonna break it all the way down, open it up and see what makes it tick. Uh, there is a blade fuse in here, which I'm actually surprised did not blow with my testing because I pushed this thing all the way up to 300 watts or as much as I could possibly draw from it. If you've seen the video, you'll notice uh, what I was trying to do with it. And the blade fuse is still intact. So I'm curious as to how this thing works. So let's go ahead and tear this thing open and see what we find on the inside. Alrighty, so let's see what makes this thing tick. So, underneath this sticker right here is a access point for a screw. It is the only screw that is on here. It looks like I'm just gonna have to get in through this way. It takes a small Phillips head screwdriver. All right, so there's the one screw, and I'm assuming that this is gonna have to be unscrewed as well, because this ring over the top here actually might get in the way of it splitting in half. So we'll go ahead and get rid of that. I don't think there's any more screws. I think that's pretty much it, so. All right, so as it turns out, these, uh, these black pieces actually come off. There's little grooves in here, and I really a flathead screwdriver would be the best choice for this but I just uh, just basically took the screwdriver and brought it underneath here like this until it popped off like that so now if you look right here you'll notice that there's uh, some spots where this end piece here actually connect to again a flathead screwdriver is gonna be best for this but am I oh there we go <clears throat> I guess I didn't have to go through all that trouble let's lift that off all right so there's the two halves looks like right there this is your negative connection this is your positive connection there is a bladed fuse in here it is a 20 amp bladed fuse and I'm seeing some MOSFETs in here, a uh, couple of capacitors, and a couple of uh, looks like logic boards on here. I'll go ahead and tear the rest of it down. Okay. And it looks like, oh, we do. I am surprised. There is an actual fan connector here. Now, this is definitely. A power jack design right here this is pretty universal to all of their inverters that they produce they have these um, this connector end style here it's not unusual for other manufacturers but that seems to be the choice for power jack so this little fan here I can't tell I'm actually curious All right, so I'm curious as to what kind of fan this is. So this is a 0 0.05 amp, 12 volt brushless fan. It doesn't spin that fast. And it's pretty small, so there's that. All right, so I'm sorry about that echo. I forgot to put my lapel mic back on my shirt. So, looks like uh, looks like the uh, the USB board, which is right here. This USB board here is connected with this connector here. However, that wouldn't matter because the outputs are soldered straight to the universal connector here. There is 
no ground whatsoever on there which I wouldn't expect it to have any kind of ground so you do not have an actual ground here looks like uh, the MOSFETs that they use here uh, I'm trying to get the right light they are HX 630 MOSFETs there's four of them and they are in parallel they are not in series as far as I can tell from the back of the board here they are in parallel You've got one single transformer here in the middle, which is also connected with a MOSFET right here in the end. This is a different MOSFET. So there's a th three total MOSFETs here. <clears throat> got a couple of large capacitors here. My guess is that the reason that there is a brief shutdown because this capacitor here isn't up to the task of being able to supply 150 watts all at once. I'm pretty sure that this capacitor here actually charges up and is on standby for low loads. And then when you give it a surge draw, then it has it drains that capacitor almost immediately. And then the 12 volt will charge it back up enough to where it can re-regulate voltage. That's my guess, just looking at it here. Of course, you got a lot of diodes and resistors, SMB resistors on here and so on. But uh, yeah, so the, the main, the brains of it um, would be right here. These, this would be the, the brains. This is your voltage. Um, I believe this is voltage detection. I don't think it's a low detector. If it were, then the inverter would shut down a lot sooner because of all the stuff that I put it through so I believe it's just probably a low and high voltage detection board that's right here and that's probably all of the brains that are actually on this whole unit I don't see any other chip with the exception of this USB circuit board which is pretty common to USB so that's pretty generic right there um, but yeah, there it is. I'll get some high resolution pictures. I will put that on my Facebook page if you want to see that. But you now know the teardown. So if you happen to buy one of these, and you notice the fuse, you can actually see it. You can see it through here, which is good. Actually flash a, a flashlight in the inside of this. And you'll be able to see whether or not that 20 amp uh, bladed fuse is blown. If it is, unfortunately, you'll have to solder it. They soldered it right here, so it is not one of those that you can just unplug. I would like to see that ability. In fact, I would like to see, I'll show you here real quick. I still have my DC heater here. I would like to see them use a style like this where you've got the fuse, the blade fuse that's on the outside that you can just replace. That is actually a handy feature to have but for $6.99 on Amazon Prime, uh, I really can't complain all that much. I bet you there's more than $7 worth of parts here. There has to be. I mean, there really has to be. You've got all these MOSFETs here. You've got this pretty decently sized transformer here in the middle. So even though it was made in China, I still believe that there's more than $7 or six dollars worth of stuff in here so I would say still it's a good value so there you have it there is the breakdown there's not really anything that you can modify this fan is probably about as good as it's gonna get it's possible that you could throw in a faster fan although that's going to uh, increase the draw again this fan draws off of the main board here so you're going to be losing um, your maximum output if you put a bigger fan in not necessarily a bigger fan but a faster fan and I don't know if they make fans that are any faster in this size I think this is what a I don't know 20 millimeter 40 25 millimeter I don't know it's so tiny this is actually one of the few I've seen that are this small so there you have it uh, if you have any questions let me know
pretty simple pretty basic and pretty cool on the inside I love taking the stuff apart to see what makes it tick so all right guys if you have any questions let me know take care